Tonight we're going to keep calm and get fired up. Woo! Welcome to the Blitz. I'm Pat Maroney. I'm John Benson and Shark. Man, you gave me some goosebumps. But we're not here to talk about goosebumps. We're here to talk some football. Well, let's start with the game that has all of Albany buzzing. It's a rivalry. It's Westover and Monroe. To the highlights. Hopefully, you like defense because there was plenty of it at Hugh Mills tonight. Westover in a world of trouble down 14 nothing, backed up their own half yard line. Quindez, Cardi. Carter saves them from the safety there, but they were not able to avert that crisis for long. Tornado of tornadoes on this one. Deontay Young finishes the job at 16-0 Monroe, but that Patriot defense is pretty stout itself. They flush Willie Jones out of the pocket, get a big third down stop, forcing Monroe to punt. But no letdown on that side of the ball from Charles Truitt's bunch. Cornelius Jenkins comes in on the blitz, cleans it up for a loss, then on third down. Malik Mathis doesn't see anyone open. He's going to pick up a few, but not enough for the first. And then near the end of the first half, Westover's Otis Glenn Jr. Bam, looks like he shot out of a cannon. What a play there. But Monroe pitches a shutout, pulls the upset over the defending region champs, 16-0. All right, now let's go to Cordell. It's homecoming at Cripps County High School as they host Bainbridge. First quarter, Elijah Tyler on the quarterback keeper. Gains about 10 yards, but knocked out by a Chris County defender. Cougars get the ball at the 35. Next drive, this is Darkevious Glover. He picks up the first down. He's inside the 10-yard line. They are in business, but they cannot punch it in. They got to settle for the field goal from Taji Thompson. It's a 3-0 score. Second quarter now, Bainbridge. Driving. Elijah Tyler again runs up the middle. This time he holds on to it at six points. They take a six to three lead. They would go on to beat Chris County 25 to six. Now we'll stay in Region 1 4A. Worth County off a of bye from last week. Hits the road. Take on a tough K Road team who beat Westover last week in overtime by one point. So tonight, the Surt Makers trying to keep the winning trend alive while the Rams are there to crash the party. Here we go. Cairo High School, the Surrett Makers against Worth County Rams. They're all ready for the kickoff. Cairo in the opening drive first quarter. Jeremiah Hill with a good game right up the middle, refusing to go down. He'll move the chains. A few plays later, Surrett Makers pull out the trick play. Chad Marshall throws to Austin. Shadows finds Will Atkins with the touchdown pass. 7-0. Cairo is up. Rams offense, no room to run against Cairo. Avery Parker is stopped for no gain by Marcus Gaines. Second quarter, Cairo with the lead. Hill drags the defender for the good first down. And then which sets up the field goal. Aldair Cortez, Surt Makers up 10 to nothing. Time running out in the first half. Chad Marshall runs into the Ram territory and sets up Cortez. Once again, we'll bring out the field goal unit and 47 yards out. At the high school level, it's unheard of. Sir Makers up 13 to nothing, but your final Worth County would fall 6 to 29. Over to Terrell County, the Greenway, probably one of my favorite mascots to say. Just the Green Wave sounds awesome. Lady of uh, Lady of Mercy, first drive, Lawrence Tillman gets the handoff and he's off to the races from his own 45 all the way to the house for the first touchdown of the day. All right, that's a nice play, but here come the green wave. Trey Bishop hits Malik Toomer off the slant, refusing to go down. He gets the first down. Like I said, he was refusing to go down. This guy right here in the backfield, Bishop, is as good as he gets. Can't beat him with his arm. He'll beat you with his legs. Another first down on the run here. And then, however, fourth and five, Bishop will connect with Shavaye Brown. He does a little shake and bake. And that's good enough for the first down inside the 15-yard line. And once again, Terrell County on another fourth down. Bishop under center, this time pulls, and he gets right into the end zone. No problem him. He'll walk in for the touchdown. And this one is coming down to the fourth quarter, 42-22. to Coming up next, we go live with Fox 31's Doug Reardon, who made the long drive all the way to Deerfield, Windsor, for our game of the week. So stay with us. You got it, man. Check one, two. Mike, check one, two. Welcome back. In GISA circles, Deerfield Windsor is a powerhouse. Every year, they're competing for state titles. Ryan Branch is trying to get Tift area up to that level, and they keep making strive, strides, and a win over the Knights tonight would be a big step. 
this is our game of the week. All the parents of the Deerfield players welcoming them on the field for the game. But early in the first, nobody's going to like this start. Tyler Lowe's pass is deflected at the line in the hands of Logan Carswell. But they wouldn't be able to score. Next Deerfield drive, Stephen Williams. Big hole. Looks like the Arizona State defense there. That's a 66 yard touchdown score that makes it seven to nothing but it was feast or famine for the Knights minutes after this run Williams can't handle the pitch and it's on the ground he fumbles luckily falls on it to keep possession same drive more fumble issues for Deerfield on the one yard line they got go for a QB sneak the low can't hang on to it another turnover but Deerfield would get it together and eventually they win 28 to 7. We made our good friend Doug Reardon make the long drive to Deerfield, Windsor. How's it going out there, Doug? Boy, oh boy, probably could have walked tonight, Patty, I'll tell you that much. But uh, really just a phenomenal game here tonight. Deerfield, Windsor obviously coming out on top. 28 to 7 in a game that I got to be honest with you didn't really look like a 28 to 7 game. Now let's start with what we knew coming into this. They were both 4 and 1, both teams 4 and 1. Now the difference there, Deerfield Windsor coming off a 3 game win streak on the other side of things, Tift Area Academy coming off a loss, their first of the season. So things flipped a little bit and obviously momentum in the favor of Deerfield Windsor and that continued tonight. Deerfield Windsor will now be 5 and 1. Uh, and that is good news for them, but uh, obviously a big win being 28-7. But a couple of key plays that Deerfield Windsor really should uh, have taken advantage of. They had three fumbles in this game. Uh, two of them were actually in the red zone. One of them you saw there was right on the one-yard line. Uh, luckily for them, Tift area not able to score on that conversion going into the second quarter. Uh, however, that is going to be obviously a problem for Deerfield Windsor. Not too much of one. They are a phenomenal team. We know that. Uh, that they are capable of winning games, especially here in the GISA, as we have seen them do uh, countless times before. Uh, but just a very minor problem that they're going to have to correct was going to be those fumbles. So we'll obviously take, uh, uh, or excuse me, keep a very close eye on both Deerfield, Windsor, and Tift Area Academy as the GISA season presses on. Right now, though, Johnny, Patty, back to you. Thanks, Doug. Glad you can make the long drive out to Deerfield. I'm glad it wasn't inconvenience for you. But the more GISA, Football with Terrell Academy was undefeated up until last week when Southland delivered their first loss of the season. And Westwood, on the other hand, is seeking their first region win of the year. So here we go. Westwood travels to Terrell Academy under seven minutes before the half, and Westwood is on the one-yard line. Collard Baggett, and the quarterback sneak, falls right into the touchdown, and the PA is good. Westover with, or Westwood with the lead. Not for long. Todd, or Todd, Dalt, Todd, excuse me, for the Eagles answers, and he gets his, his buddy there, Riley Carlson, 60 yards for the touchdown. PAT, no good, however. Westwood trying to get something going, and Chasen Warsham finds Baggett for the first down. Later on the drive, third, on the third down, the Eagles defense said, not today, Junior. Tyler Falls takes down Cole Smith, huge loss, fourth down. Warsham throws downfield, but is batted down by Chase Dabbs. And we got ourselves a turnover. Less than 30 seconds on the clock before the half. It's Todd and Carlson again. And like last time, all the way to the house. And they would go for two and get it. That'd be the touchdown there. However, in the fourth, this one's a close one. Westwood 27, Terrell Academy 28. It's our player of the week. We go all the way to Calhoun County, and he's a senior for the Cougars. John Williams, the quarterback, threw for two touchdowns in the first quarter for 165 yards in the air by completing 70% of his passes. Although impressive as that sounds, Williams helped his team beat Early County for the first time in over a decade. So a huge night for the senior in Calhoun County, beating Early 14-12. Williams will be our player of the week. And nice weather tonight for high school games. Tomorrow, kind of a mixed bag for regional college games. You're heading to T uh, Tallahassee. You will probably see some rain. You're heading up to uh, Athens. Well, guess what? Nice weather temperatures just into the 70s. It may be a little bit breezy. And, well, around here, guess what? We do have a chance for some showers as we go through the evening hours. Tomorrow, we may see a little bit of rain. Uh, as we go through the uh, game time. Uh, keep it here. Much more scores and highlights. They're coming up.
Welcome back. Every Friday night, football fans pack the stands to watch their teams do battle. And more often than not, these games are played on immaculate playing services. Let's meet some of the men behind making these high school football fields look so good. It's Thursday morning, bright and early, and the nurturing of Worth County's Milt Miller Field continues. We cut our field three times a week now, and we start painting our lines and, and putting our numbers down, and then I get our logo on Thursday. Football fields look great right now, but getting the grass to look this green is no easy process. It takes year-round maintenance. It don't just start on Friday night. It starts all year long as we prepare a field, fertilizing, watering, and doing the things that's necessary. Worth County uses Tipton Turf, a natural grass grown in southwest Georgia, and their investment is paying off. Well, that's an important thing with an athletic field to keep your grass green. That's what the fans want to see on Friday night besides the big win. At Hugh Mills Stadium in Albany, they're done cutting their Bermuda grass for the week. And now it's time to add the finishing touches. I do all the paint. They hold the stencil. They put the stencil down over the numbers or over the hash marks, and I paint them. Johnny's crew is responsible for all the groundskeeping at Hugh Mills, a 12-month-a-year job. I'm real proud for it, yes, because it's hard work going to it. A lot of people don't know who do it. They say, wow, the field looked great, you know, and they never know who do it. Even though the people behind the field may go unnoticed, the field itself can't be missed. They're hard at work and effort just to, to providing a quality playing surface for our kids. Uh, okay. Helps the team. I think they're pretty proud of it, too. Pat Maroney, Fox 31 Sports. Now back to the actual games. Look at that Instagram pic. Oh, wait, hold on. They're running out on the field. That was confusing. <laughs> First play of the game for Gerald starting things off. Gerald Morgan intercepted by Early County's Darrell Somerset. That'll give them the football after three downs. Early County forced to punt. Trey Graham tries to make a play here on the return, but gets stripped and recovered by Tristan Howard. Jason Strickland will not be pleased with the turnovers. Now they look to capitalize in the end zone. This is a 12-yard touchdown run to get Early County on the board. Later on in the game, Fitzgerald has the ball. It's fourth and 12. Punt attempt. It's a fake. Bold move. Doesn't quite work. Yash Arcadia brought down by Dewan Booker to give the Bobcats the ball very next play. Norman Miles sneaks it in for the touchdown. Later in the first, Purple Hurricanes showing some fight. Michael Jackson blocks the punt. Wow, special teams looks disastrous in this game. And right now, it's a fourth in the fourth quarter. Fitzgerald is up 27 to 20. You know, Pat, you know who else had uh, their region game? First region game of the evening and the year. Those Pelham Hornets who took on Brooks County. Maurice Freeman's crew made the trip up to Pelham High School. Hornets there taking the field, getting ready for action. A little mis miscommunication here on this very first play in the backfield when we get started. As DeMarte Jones puts the ball on the ground and Calvin Johnson, he recovers it for the Hornets there. Trojans defense looking tough and a gang of defenders on the tackle here. We're going the other way. And then Matt Locke on the punt return, reverses his field, goes to the far side of the field, finds some running room and a nice return for ending up midfield at the sidelines there. Devon Williams, Wims gets the handoff on the next play, breaks loose, makes a few moves and strolls into the end zone. Two point conversion is good for Brooks County. They're up eight to nothing. And then let's take a look at that Trojan band while we're at it. They're looking good. They're loud, getting the crowd pumped up. Brooks driving. In the second quarter, Jones back to pass. It hits Matlock wide open in the middle of the field for an easy touchdown. Extra point, however, no good. Brooks had the, the touchdown, 14 to nothing, and Brooks County would end up rolling over the Pelham Hornets, 26 to 0. Time to check out that play of the week. This one's a doozy. We've seen it before. Sir Makers pull off the trick play. Chad Marshall throws to Austin Shadows who finds Will Atkins for the touchdown pass, 7-0. And then Sir Makers pulling all the rabbits out of the hat for this touchdown. And they would go on to win the game and be our play of the week. Can't get rid of us just yet. It's a special night at Lee County, and we show you our fan of the week. It's all next on The Blitz.
Welcome back. For every school, homecoming is one of the biggest nights of the year. Alums come back, and of course, the homecoming courts are dressed to impress for everybody. That's all great, but the most important thing is getting that W. That's right. And that's what Lee County was focused on. But Mitchell County trying to play spoilers in Leesburg, which is never an easy place to play on that beautiful new turf. Here's Giovante Daniels fielding the kickoff. He gets some good blocks. He's going to take it all the way down to around midfield. So they think they have it rolling early, but plays like this will make Coach Dean Fabrizio pull his hair out. Garrett Morrell tries a little shovel pass. Kendrick Pollard picks it. Mitchell has some early momentum, but look at Dextra Green fill the hole here. He might be small, but he is fierce. What a play there by the former region defensive player of the year. But then Malik Rhodes finds some running room for Mitchell County. He brings it inside the 10 yard line, but after some negative plays, Eagles facing a fourth down and the pass rush just swallows up Mitchell County here. Fumble or no fumble, doesn't really matter. We're going the other way. Morrell then gets into a little rhythm for Lee County. Finds Troy Eford, one of his favorite targets over there by the sidelines. That's a big game, but Lee County can air it out or they can ground and pound. They finish this drive with the run game. They go up 7-0 to zero and they roll over Mitchell County 50-12. Once region games start, the atmosphere at these games picks up quite a bit. Well, that's right. Lucky we sent our friends at Darden State over out to the Cougars Den in Cordial. I'm Ariel Mallory, and we're here in Cordial where the Chris County Cougars face the Bainbridge Bearcats. Here's some sights and sounds from tonight's game. Go Cougars! <laughs> Watching the sights and sounds never gets old, and they keep getting better and better <laughs> each week. Miller is up at this point in the game, 21 to, to 8 over Bankton Charter, and then Murray back to pass, and he's picked off by Matthew Dean, and he rumbles in for the touchdown, making it 21 15. Miller County still has the lead, though. Garrison dikes on the next possession with the handoff. He breaks loose, and that is a huge gain. For the, for the uh, first down in the, in the midfield there. Next play, same play, same results. This time, Dykes takes it all the way to the house for six points. A extra point puts the Blazers up 22 to 21. <laughs> Crowd is going crazy, band loving it. We got a comeback. Miller County driving, Merritt on the keeper, breaks loose down the far sideline, fighting for every extra yard he can get out of this run, and he does it with class there. Then Jacoby Cooper. He gets the handoff right at the middle. Score standing with the touchdown. Two point conversion, however, no good. 27 to 22. Miller County would end up coming away with this one just a little bit over the Blazers. Check this out. One of my favorite parts of the show, the fan of the week, JC and Mackenzie Matthews, who are going to be future Bakington Charter Blazers, or Lady Blazers rather, having a good, good time out of the game. JC and Mackenzie Matthews, thank you for being our fan of the week. If you love football like many of us here at Fox 31, then we have a very special treat for you. It's called the 2014 Pro You Pick Him Challenge. Go to WFXL.com to get registered. Look up near the top of the page at our Features tab. You will see a link to get signed up. Once you are in, you pick all of this weekend's NFL games. Bad news, though, the Arizona Cardinals are not playing. No spread or anything like that. It's just straight up. You can win prizes. We're giving away Subway gift cards weekly. At the end of the year, the prizes just get bigger. So go to our website and make your picks. Now we'll go to Mike for a last look at this weekend's weather. Absolutely, another Friday night just about in the books. That means we can start looking forward to the weekend. And actually, not bad this weekend with temperatures into the mid-80s, a chance for rain tomorrow afternoon, and then showers and thunderstorms likely across southwest Georgia to round out the weekend on Sunday. Those rain chances actually continue right into early next week. Awesome. Well, I'm yeah. excited about this pick'em here. 
because yeah. we're, we're also taking challenging Sasha and Doug there in the morning show. So we're going to. A little gonna, bit of pressure cool. on us. We're the sports guys. Yeah, sure. We kind of have gotta, to win. We can't. I expect it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I expect but sign up. You can also play against, against us as well. So mm -hmm. be sure to do that. All right. That's it for us. We'll see you next week for another episode of The Blitz.